In this video, we're going to learn about a nice application of tuples. It's called unpacking. So we saw unpacking before shortly uh, when we talked about list operations. So I showed you the asterisk um, so-called operator, which is not an operator, but a syntax that unpacked the contents of a list inside another list. So um, we already saw one application of that. And implicitly, we also saw tuple unpacking in a couple of other places, but we didn't call it like that. So let's um, create a new file and rename it into tuple unpacking. And uh, let's uh, talk a bit more deeply about that. So let's do, start with an example. Let's simply create a list of numbers. And I'm going to use the numbers from 1 through 12 that we um, always use in this course so far. So this is the list numbers. So it's a list object, right? So what do I mean by unpacking? So one application of unpacking goes as follows. Because we have now 12 items or 12 elements in this list, what we could do is the following. I could say, um, let's say v1 for variable one, and let's um, also write v2, v3, v4, v5, v6, v7, v8, v9, v10, v11, and finally v12. So I'm basically defining 12 variables um, simultaneously. By doing the following, I'm simply assigning them to numbers. Or actually, I'm taking numbers and I'm assigning it to these 12 variables on the left-hand side. So before, we usually um, or we only saw uh, one variable on the left-hand side of an assignment statement. Now, this is the first time where I show you um, more than one variable on the left-hand side of an assignment statement. And this is an application of unpacking and packing, so to say. So um, wh wh where's the unpacking? Well, numbers we know is a list of 12 numbers. And these numbers are being unpacked individually into one variable each. So let's execute the cell. First see it works, the Python doesn't complain. And if I now look at the variable we want, I see its value is simply one coming from the list. Okay, so now you may wonder what happens if you get the wrong number of variables. So maybe let's get rid of the V12 here. And uh, now we get an error message and it says too many values to unpack. Okay, so expected 11. So what does that error message mean? So on the left hand side, we have 11 variables. So Python is expecting 11 elements to be unpacked. However, the numbers list when unpacked has 12 elements in it, so it's one too many, and Python simply doesn't know what to do with it. Similarly, if we go ahead and um, add, let's say, v12 back, and let's also add v13, we also get a value error, and now it says not enough values to unpack. So in other words, uh, Python is now expecting 13 variables, however, the list only provides 12 elements. So for the last uh, variable, we don't have a value to assign to. So in other words, when we use this unpacking syntax here, um, then uh, we need to get the number of variables right on the left-hand side. However, there is a nice syntax that um, avoids us in the, um, or that helps us in such situ situations. So let's assume you're only interested in maybe the first element in the numbers list, and maybe also, um, let's say, in the third one. So how could you write that? Well, we are going to write first, comma, Underscore. So underscore is a, a value is a valid va variable name. So, um, but it's a convention, and the convention is when we um, use the name underscore for a variable, then we are basically communicating that we need a variable for syntactical reasons, but we don't want to keep um, the value. We are not interested really in it, but we need to, to put some variable here, and that is just a convention in the Python world to put an underscore in such scenarios. We've seen the underscore before in a for loop where we did not need the uh, variable over which we looped. Right now, let's write third and let's assume all the other elements after the third one we don't really need. So, what we could do is the following we could use the star op, uh, star syntax that we saw in the video on list operations the first time, and we could pack the remaining elements into a variable called rest. So, let's do that and let's assign on the right hand side numbers. So, numbers is now split into uh, the first element the third element and the remaining ones. So let's do that. 
and we see we get no error message. So in other words, this star, this star here um, avoids uh, this error message that we got on the, on the previous two cells for not having enough or too many uh, variables on the left-hand side. If I check first, it is one. If I check third, it will be three. And now if I check what is rest, it is a list of the remaining elements. Unfortunately, it's a list. So um, this is always going to be a list on the left-hand side. Um, it's still called, um, so, so unpacking is usually uh, in the context of tuples, but um, we, we know that uh, we have learned before that tuples and lists are basically the same thing. The only difference is lists can be mutated after they are created and um, tuples cannot. So tuples are like immutable lists. That's what we said in the previous video. So um, yeah, so that is um, on the left-hand side. So what we are doing here, uh, on the right-hand side, sorry, what we are doing here, this is unpacking. So we are unpacking the elements of a list. And on the left-hand side, we are packing, which is the opposite. So the remaining elements that are not going into the first, the underscore and the third variable here, so the remaining ones, they are packed inside the rest variable. Okay, so unpacking on the right, packing on the left. Okay, so in other words, unpacking means we just unload everything and packing just means we, we get whatever we get and put it in one thing, in one bag. Okay. So the terms packing and unpacking, they are really uh, intuitive here. Okay, so um, this is how we can unpack stuff. So now, um, where else does this um, unpacking and packing happen implicitly? So let's assume you have a for loop. So let's say we have numbers. And let's assume in addition to numbers, we have a list called, let's call it names. And names is a list. Let's make up a couple of names. Let's make up the first name, Achim. The second name is going to be Berthold. And the third name is going to be Caesar. Okay, so now what we are going to do in the next step is we are going to use the, the SIP built-in to SIP together the two list objects. So um, this is something that uh, was explained, uh, I think, in chapter four. So we are going to use a for loop and we're going to say for, let's say, number, singular, comma, name, singular, in zip, and then within the zip uh, built in, we put the numbers list first because number comes first. That is why we put numbers first as well and names. And if we now go ahead and let's say, for example, say print number, comma, name, what we see is this for loop is going to run three times. Okay, why three times and not 12 times? Well, obviously the shorter list wins here. So once the first of the two um, iterables here runs out of elements, then the entire SIP built in does not produce any more elements, so to say. So the shorter one wins. And SIPing is like, um, just like a, for a, a pullover, you can SIP stuff together. So that is where the term comes from. And now what does that have to do with unpacking and packing? So I can show you something. So maybe let's copy paste this same cell here. And instead of, instead of uh, having two variables, number and name as a singular, we are going to simply call that X now, one X. And we are going to print the X here. And what we see here, when we do that, we see now X becomes a tuple where the first element is a number and the second element is a name. So in other words, the SIP built in provides us with tuples, okay? And now what the upper of the two versions does, this one here, this syntax, number comma name, this also unpacks the, the tuple, okay? So in other words, we get from the SIP, we get tuples and the tuples are here unpacked. So we could also go ahead and also print out the type of X just to be sure that it's a tuple. So what here we see, we can confirm uh, the SIP um, uh, built-in gives us back tuples. And here in this line, we are unpacking them. Okay, so let's maybe put a nice header on here and say unpacking in for loops. Okay, so this is something we have seen before in I think chapter four, this is when we saw that f the first time. Um, there are also other, um, other built-ins that do something similar like the enumerate built-in for example. Um, so maybe to review that, what we also could do is we could say for i as an index, comma name in enumerate 
names print i comma name and now we get 0 1 2 and the reason why is enumerate gives us back an index number plus the next element in the iterable that it takes and by default it starts with 0 as we see but we could also provide it an optional start value let's say start equals 1 and now we get back 1 uh, Achim 2 Berthold 3 Caesar so enumerate and zip um, in this case um, they do the same thing they, they provide us back with a tuple of two elements, so a number and a name. And uh, we are going to unpack them either by writing number comma name or in this in this uh, new version here down here by saying i comma name. So we are unpacking stuff. Okay, so that's a very similar idea. It's actually the same idea than unpacking above here. It's all only happening in a for loop. Okay, so that is unpacking. So now let's... Um, look at one more thing in this video. Let's look at uh, packing and unpacking in the context of functions. So let me write a function first um, because the example will probably um, speak louder than any words than that could describe it. So let's define a function and the function is simply going to take some argument and let's um, let's think of a, an example so let's think of a function that takes many arguments and it simply multiplies them together so the, the arguments have to be numbers so let's call the function product and product should take a couple of arguments and now the question is so far in in this course we had to um, provide a parameter for every argument the function should take but now um, this function should take as many arguments as we want. So we may give it um, one, one number, we may give it 10 numbers, but it doesn't matter how many numbers I give it, the function should multiply them together, right? So there is a syntax and it is what you've already seen before, the star syntax. So the star syntax is in this case packing. So in other words, when I pass this function more than one argument, they're all packed together in the variable called args. But let me finish the function first and then we are going to see. So the function simply multiplies all arguments. So let me um, define the function. So let's say um, our product to start with, so maybe let's call it RV for return value. So our, or let's call it result, that is even nicer. So our result to start with is simply one because one is the neutral element um, of multiplication. And then we are going to say for arc as an argument in arcs. So I'm looping over the arcs here. And uh, I'm going to say result is equal. The new result will be set to the old result times the argument. And we can make uh, that short. So we can abbreviate that by simply saying um, times equals arc. Okay, that is the short version. And then after the for loop, we are simply going to return the result. And we could put in uh, two empty lines to make that the logic a little bit more apparent here. Okay, so that function is now um, built. So let's go ahead and use the function. So let's call the function without any arguments. And we see the function gives us back one. So why is that? Well, arguments internally is going to be a tuple. That is why um, this uh, video is under the uh, part in, in chapter seven where we talk about tuples. So internally, arcs is going to become a tuple and this tuple is going to be empty. It is an, a tuple with no, with no elements inside. Therefore, this for loop does not even run a single time. It is simply skipped. So in other words, we set result to one and we simply go down to the, to the return result. That is why this function simply returns one. If I go ahead and I call the product function with one argument and I pass it to number two, I get back two. Why? Because one times two is simply two. Let's go ahead. Let's say product of, let's say two and three. And now I get back six. So one times two times three will give me six. Okay. So now here you get the idea that you can give this function as many arguments as you want. We can go ahead and we can say, let's give it three ones, maybe three twos and a three. And I get back 24. 
So this function can now take as many arguments as we want to pass it, and it can process them. So that is what the star does. Okay. So in other words, the star here is packing. Okay. It packs together all the arguments that we pass it into one tuple. Just um, to illustrate one further point, um, I'm going to temporarily print out an, a debug uh, message by saying print type of arcs. And the reason why I do that is to simply show you that internally arcs within the function is just a tuple. Okay. So um, here, that's the confirmation. So this is just built into Python. This is just Python's way of how to deal with that. So this is packing with in the context of function calls. And now um, we do the opposite. We do unpacking. And I give you a very similar example. So above, we define a list called numbers, a list of 12 numbers. And let's say I want to multiply together these um, 12 numbers. So let's go ahead and call the product function and I pass it as the argument, the numbers list. Let's see what happens. We get back a list. Okay. So why do we get back a list? That, that shouldn't happen. We should get back an integer really, right? A number. So let's try to find out what is the semantic error behind that. So let's scroll up. So if I pass, so how many, first of all, how many arguments do I pass the product function in this call here, down here? Well, the answer is one only, right? Just one, one list. Even though the list has 12 numbers in it, the function only gets one argument. So internally, arcs will become a tuple that has one list in it one element. So it is a tuple that has a list that has the numbers. It is not a tuple with numbers. It is a tuple that has a list that has the numbers. Therefore, um, therefore, what's going to happen is we, we take a result, which is one, and we are going to multiply. This for loop is going to run exactly one time because there is one argument given and it is going to run, the for loop is going to run once for every argument. And it's going to multiply one times a list because the one argument that we give it is a list. Now, you all know what happens if I multiply a list with a number. So one times numbers. It simply gives me back another list, the same list. If I do that with, let's say, two times numbers, I would get back the list um, duplicated, but it's still one list. So this is a list, con list concatenation, right? You remember that. So this is what's going on here, and this is why we are getting back a wrong result. So what we really want to do is, I don't want to give the product function a list as the argument, but instead I want to give it the numbers that are within the list as arguments. So how can I do that? Well, I have to unpack numbers. Okay. And we have saw in the video on list operations already how to unpack a list. We use the star syntax right here. So no note the difference. Maybe I leave that in so that you can compare later on. Let's say, we're going to call the product function and say star numbers. And now I get back some big number. And these are the numbers from 1 through 12 all multiplied together. Okay, so now what's going on here? Well, the star here, the star numbers, is going to unpack the numbers list, which means the product function is being called with 12 arguments, not 1, but 12. And then internally, the product function takes the 12 arguments and packs them together into the arcs um, parameter, if you want. And then you have internally a tuple with 12 numbers. So we call the function by unpacking a list of 12 numbers. And internally, we have a tuple of 12 numbers that are then multiplied together. Okay, if you find that tricky, just rewatch the video and play with it a bit. It's not too hard, really. It's the same concept as above when we talked about packing and unpacking. Now it's just in the context of functions. So why do you why should you care about it? Why should you, why should you learn about that? Well, many functions, if you think about it, you don't know how many arguments a function should take, right? So naturally a function that does something with numbers may take one number or three numbers as an argument. And um, oftentimes it is um, easier to, um, uh, to design a function so that it can just handle as many arguments as we want. Okay. And that is just Python's way of doing that. And so you oftentimes, when you read um, code written by more experienced Python developers, you see these star arcs all the time. And just note, within the function, we are packing all the arguments in the arcs um, tuple. And when we call the function here, in this regard, we're going to unpack 
um, all the all the numbers, right? This would be the, the same as if we manually did the following. Manually, we simply go ahead and typed all the numbers in there, just like that. This should give us the the same result. However, the untagging is done for us by the star syntax. Okay, so let me repeat uh, what we learned in this video. So we started with a, a list as an example. And by having more than one variable on the left-hand side, we can have we can unpack a list into variables. If the numbers, the number of elements on the right-hand side in the list and the number of variables on the left-hand side does not match, what you can do is you can use the, the star um, syntax here for packing. So this here is packing, okay? And um, yeah, and maybe let me show you another nice use case. So let, let's assume I have a variable a, which is zero, and I have a variable b, which is one. Let's say I want to flip the two variables. How can I do that? I can do packing and unpacking at the same time. So what I could do is I could say a comma b will be set to the result of b comma a. And if I now go ahead and look at a, it's going to be one. And if I go to look at b, it's going to be zero. So the, the values have flipped. So this is the same idea. So oftentimes you also see that if you want to flip the, the values of two variables, kind of. Um, when we talked about the um, iterative or the looping version of uh, the Fibonacci numbers, uh, not the Fibonacci number of the factorial um, numbers, then uh, it is actually cool to put that in, right? And, and I think I did that in the video actually. So this is all packing and unpacking. And uh, with for loops, we have done that before without knowing it, without calling it what it is and uh, doing it with in the context of function calls, this is now new, but it's also not really new because now that you know what is packing and unpacking, well, you can just simply apply it in many, many different uh, positions, right? So that is uh, a nice um, thing to know. It makes writing code a bit nicer. And um, yeah, so learn about that. And in the next video, we are going to talk about some other uh, things we can achieve using tuples. So I see you then.